difficulties, you may have to completely rethink your future. And you don't have to do it all at once. That's the good news. It'll come That is a slowly very, very good point. <laughs> over time. Because yeah. I know if you, one of the most searched terms is future planning, special needs mm -hmm. future planning or special needs trust. That's a huge search term. Yeah. And at some point, yes, it's appropriate to think about that. Mm -hmm. And um, depending on your, you know, your personal situation, your health, your, all those things, it is something you do need to look at. And we have done that, thankfully. We did that a few years mm -hmm. ago, but it wasn't the first thing we did. <laughs> so we, mm -hmm. we kind of eased into that. And your new priorities will reflect your new um, future when you get there. Right. And I'm not saying give up on your child at an early age because everybody wants to be that mama bear and, you know, mm -hmm. fix it. <laughs> they want to fix it. Yeah. And a lot of times you can, with you know, if you find, um, you know, you have the right therapy, God's grace, God's planning, mm -hmm. all these things work together. And, but for some of us, those things like wanting your daughter to talk, never, uh, still haven't, I don't say never, because I still have hope that she will one day talk, because, mm -hmm. you know, kind of comes and goes. But so you don't want to give up on your child. There's always right. hope. Mm -hmm. And but as time passes, you may have to face certain realities that you're going to have a different future than you had hoped. And don't be afraid to embrace that, because I don't think we were meant to be miserable all our lives. And I know I, I actually know people who have children who just every day is a battle behavior and they're adults. And so they're not little kids with behavior problems. They are adults with behavior problems. And, you know, it's just killing them to think about having to put them in a home. Mm. But um, they would rather persevere with their child at home. And, you know, and that's good. That's their decision. That's what they want to do. Right. So, um, but they're embracing it. That's that's where they are with their mm -hmm. child. And they're embracing that. And then what your child is like now is not necessarily what they're going to look like five to ten years from now, especially if they're younger. There are children who... I think my favorite book I think that I've read recently is Edo in Autism Land. And it's mm -hmm. about a young man, he's nonverbal, he had autism. And around the time he was 12 years old, he had severe autism, so you know, like the hand flapping and everything. Yeah. And he learned how to use a community, he learned how to use touch typing through the Soma rapid prompting method. And he learned mm -hmm. how to communicate. And so he started writing blog posts and those were eventually collected into a book, which is the one I just mentioned. Huh. And he talks about all the things that were going on in his head mm, while uh -huh. he couldn't communicate. And so anyone who has a nonverbal child, I highly recommend that book mm -hmm. just so you can get some insight whether your child has autism or not. Um, mine doesn't. So, but it's right. still an insight into her mind and what could potentially be going on there. And I always say assume intelligence because this kid was perfectly intelligent. Yes. And exactly. so he was, and he talked about you know, the perpetual kindergarten of special ed. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so, uh -huh. and because he was in the public school system and he, and by time he got, so this, so 12, that would have been around sixth grade. Mm -hmm. So that's when he learned how to communicate. So a few years later, by the time he was ready for high school, he was mainstreamed in almost all of his classes. And he said he still had severe autism. He still was, you know, hand flapping. It didn't change any of that. Right. But it had opened but, up his mind and being able to communicate. communicate. So never give up on your child. There's right. no reason to think no. that, mm -hmm. you know, this is how it's going to be forever. Yeah. I, I have 10 adopted siblings with special needs and three of them um, were nonverbal. And my parents, my mom learned how to do the eye gazing technique and communication. Oh, wow. And everybody thought they were vegetables until they started communicating. And, you know, even my one sister who only had a brain stem, she knew exactly what was going on all the time. Wow. And, and it, I mean, the neurosurgeons were just shocked. But we, we give, like you said, we give up too easy. These kids have something going on. We just have to connect with them in the right way. And it, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of creativity, a lot of prayer <laughs> for us as parents and patience. Because we just don't know how that's going to happen. That's my secret dream is.